Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Taste of Australia. We're on the third and final episode of this series. Uh, we're very happy to be welcoming our guests here today, Rebecca. She's been a regular on the show. She knows all things Australian. You guys might know already. If you haven't watched it already, check it out. We've had two episodes already. One with Chef Chris Donnellan at Stoker and second, Chef Heli Tong. Uh, and of course, today we have Vin. Thank you. What a beautiful restaurant, first off. As you can see, they specialize in seafood, which is what we're talking about today. Uh, we brought a great lobster here called crayfish in Australia, crayfish, I understand. Yes. But before we go into that, just quick introductions from you two and we'll get started. Uh, Chef first. Chef uh, hello, I'm uh, Vin Lee. Um, I've been uh, working at uh, Executive Chef and uh, co-founder of uh, Ngoc Su Seafood and Bar for around two years now. Rebecca, um, introduction from you as well. Ben, great to be here with you to yeah. see this great creation. My pleasure. Wonderful Australian seafood and how great to be back. So with Austrade, it's our real pleasure to be able to bring Australian products here into Vietnam and to work with suppliers, chefs, importers, distributors to make sure consumers get the best of our products on the table, like today. Great. Well, let's dive into it, Ben. What do we have here? Okay, so <laughs> I'm trying to do an Asian and Vietnamese take on a uh, Spanish paella. First, I cook the spiny or the Western rock lobster, mm. perfectly cooked, like low and slow on the charcoal. Uh, after that, I glaze it with the Vietnamese uh, fish sauce glaze, and I use the head to make the sauce to make uh, the crunchy rice under. Uh, after the stock. Yes, the oh, head. Oh, they make great stock. Of course, it's yeah. very sweet and very uh, juicy from the head, you know, like mm -hmm. you need to utilize every part of the, the lobster. That's what we're trying to do. Yep. Never never have a food waste, even a small chop of this and that. We try to make soup, we try to make stock out of it. Uh, beside that, we have the cauliflower and the raisin that we pickle in uh, the Vietnamese vinegar. Uh, beside that, we have a curry, the crab meat that we marinate with the usual kosher from mm. a Japanese uh, ingredient. Mm. And uh, finally, some basil to top off to have the freshness and some spring onion on top. Uh, and beside that, we have a crunchy taro too. So it's a dish you can find in a, very, a lot of Vietnamese cuisine. Um, you mind I squeeze the lemon and start eating? <laughs> yeah, okay. let's do it. Thank you so much. I'm just Please. impressed with this the amazing mixture of ingredients and flavors to really bring out the best in the in the lobster and oh, look how big you. look at the big pieces mm. they're huge pieces of the oh the, this from is, the tail yeah this is the size c mm -hmm. from uh the grading so it's why yep. size c is around uh, one kilo plus so around yep. that so it's a uh, good good size for uh three to four guests now i think you really want to be able to share this with friends of chef course. um best way to enjoy a delicious meal thank you with friends but also i can see that it would be a wonderful meal for two mm. a very special occasion <laughs> you want to cheers to yeah, some cheers. Uh, chardonnay yeah. from australia yeah thanks so much cheers, chef thank you yeah. my pleasure well chef in would love for you to to kind of serve of a course portions a lady here. first you know oh. a beautiful lady over here don't be shy yes okay i'll try to scoop everything in of course here's the base Okay, so that's your rice. And a good chunk wow. of lobster. That's on massive. Top, you know, wow. That's and so you know, generous. don't forget the, the, the crunchy part of the rice. No, the... That's my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yes, and for my friend Hal right, right here. Yeah. And also the colors. Look at the bright red mm. of the, the lobster tail and the well, bright orange and red. You see and a the, little bit crunchy here. Yeah. The... So it's one of my favorites. So it's not burned. And we balance with a lot of uh, pickle and acidity, so you mm. can have another bite. Uh, Rebecca, um, yeah. what kind of trends have emerged in recent years that have kind of shown your team and just the market that Australian products are, are what's really popular these days? Yeah, well, yeah. the demand for seafood in Vietnam has really been skyrocketing. Mm. I mean, mm. Vietnamese consumers yeah. eat on average about 40 kilograms of seafood. Wow per person per okay. year, which is a huge amount. Mm. And it's growing too. Mm. So what that has also shown is that people are also looking for new products. So we've now been getting in the Western Rock Lobster, the Southern Rock Lobster and the Eastern Rock Lobster, three different varieties from Australia. Mm. And, and also looking for other 
species from mm. Australia. So we're now getting in um, a wide range of abalone, fresh wild abalone, wow. both the black lip, the brown lip, and now the jade green tiger, mm. the green yes. with, the, with the stripes, very unique, all different sizes, all different textures, all different flavors, but mm. all coming fresh from Australia and live. Mm. And you oh, can really wow. taste the ocean um, from the really beautiful, pristine, fresh wild oceans of Australia. Uh -huh. And then we've got the, we're also seeing people looking for different um, shellfish like oysters. Mm. We're getting requests for more crab mm. coming through. So we've had some snow crab coming in from the deep sea waters of um, New South Wales and Tasmania, but now we're getting in some mud crab as well and more fin fish. So people are asking for more salmon because it's such a, you know, important- Wild card and- uh, Yeah, yeah and, and also the, you know, now getting in some kingfish. Mm. Yeah and some Patagonian toothfish. So the actual diversity is really growing and, and we're just so pr proud to be able to bring this to the table because it is premium mm. product, but it is really, the trend is very much around knowing that it's fresh or it's been really well handled. Mm. So the Australian products have got a real quality assurance to the way they're presented and, 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 and you can see the supply chain that there's food safety on every step because it's a really perishable very, very high value product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Vin, uh, from the restaurant side, what kind of types of seafood? I mean, Vietnamese people need no introduction exactly. to seafood. Mm. But um, with that said, what's trending nowadays? What are people ordering? Um, you know, like the Vietnamese mm. people mm. have always been uh, a big seafood eater because mm. from north to south, we are always next to the sea. Mm -hmm. And um, every day, and, and secondly, it's like the people now, they really like to eat seafood due to the health issue. Mm. Uh, it's better for your blood, it's better for your organ. Uh, otherwise, like what's the trend now? I see people eat a lot of lo uh, a lot of lobster, you know, the lobster from the train mm. is the same family here. And a lot of fishes, we have big tuna from the train part two. Mm -hmm. Beside that, uh, there aren't really a lot of like special species, mm. uh, especially like there's only few that they, uh, do like the spear fishing, like mm -hmm. but you don't get that commercially. Mm -hmm. You have to know uh, fishermen, yeah. and you it's not a consistent product yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, beside that, uh, it's it's great that a lot of sea like seafood from Australia is coming over. Mm -hmm. So the Vietnamese people and uh, all the people who have a great uh, admiration for seafood can have other choices. Mm. And uh, in different water is there's different quality of seafood you know sure. as for example like the the, the oyster in Australia tastes different than here or mm. even US or Europe yeah this sea there's a different uh, pH and uh, the different uh, coldness of the water yeah the so, different nutrients in the water exactly too, what yes yeah so it del deliver different taste I mean ev everything is good though but like how you want to um, uh, go for it and what are you looking for and what you want to cook with it. Yeah, I think also how, because we're so close, mm -hmm. Australia being a neighboring country, yeah. we share waters and well, in the, in the Asia Pacific area and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's much quicker to get to market. Mm -hmm. So the actual supply chain, the links in the chain are shorter. Mm -hmm. So, and also the, the time getting it to market, if chef needs something on the next flight, mm -hmm. you can get it within the next 48 hours, 72 exactly. hours mm -hmm. and, and plan ahead. Um, for demand mm. and know that he can get supply mm. in quickly. And that's really important too when you're dealing with particularly live product when it has to be handled so carefully. So what we're doing with the live products is ensuring that the, we use the Australian Seafood Quality Index which measures the cold chain with the temperature of the, of the, of the creatures when they're transported from every step and then into the water here. Mm. They're put, in, in, put back into tanks with exactly the same pH and the same nutrient balance as what we have in their natural waters in Australia to maintain the quality and the, and, the, and the freshness of the live product. So, well, two part question, what are we having today? But also, uh, why are we choosing this of wine? Of course. This? So, um, in Australia or maybe Australia and uh, the south part, mm -hmm. so we have very good Chavignon Blanc mm -hmm. and uh, Chardonnay. There's a lot of richness in the rice uh, there's a lot of sauce and you know and uh, seafood. I want to introduce a Chardonnay, mm -hmm. so it's more acidity mm -hmm. to balance up all the food right here. So you get a quick mouthwash and you know go back naked for more. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why I choose a good Chardonnay. Historically, Vietnamese need no, no introduction to seafood, but how about wine? Because wine is 
fairly, not the com most common. It's getting really big in Vietnam now, but in the past it hasn't. So what have you seen in regards to Vietnamese people enjoying seafood with wine? Is that a new trend? And what are you seeing with that as well? For all the young people, mm. they are fast trend catcher. What's new, you know, mm. they, of course, the way of eating seafood is always seafood and white wine, seafood and white mm. wine, different type uh, to different taste and different approach. Mm. But however, like the past Vietnamese, you know, uh, they, there's a lot of uh, quang nhau, which is uh, beer drinking mm. and enjoying seafood. So mm. it was a lot of beer and uh, seafood before. But beer, there's just kind of plain, too plain. Yeah. It doesn't balance and enhance the dish. Uh, to make the dish better, to wash down the mouth. Mm. Well, you mentioned Chardonnay, but we, I mean, it's, there's so many different ways you can pair wine with seafood, whether it's a sparkling wine with an oysters or whether it's a Sauvignon Blanc with a, with a nice grilled piece of fish, mm. you know, Chardonnay with a paella, slightly a bit more richer to complement the, the richness of the meal, or even a rosé yeah. goes really nicely with many, many fish dishes, whether it's a mullet or, a, or another fish dish. Nice you know, you mentioned the supply chain is really close uh, between Australia and Vietnam, the Asia Pacific. Let's dive into that a little bit, especially on the topic of sustainability. Yeah. Um, in the whole ecosystem, uh, why is Australia mm. doing a good job in regards to that? Yeah, it's a it's a really good question. How? Mm. Because uh, it's a such an important industry to so many people that employs many industries across the different mm. species, and so Australian fisheries. Mm -hmm with the industry groups and the fisher um, communities have instituted very, very strict um, sustainability uh, criteria for growing seafood and catching it and when it's in season, when it's at an optimum, so each generation can be replenished so mm. the stocks aren't fished out. Mm. So in some, in some species there's quotas applied or to, to ensure that the, there's enough supply to meet the market demand but it's really important that we've actually got some of the most stringent um, quality assurance and sustainability measures in the world in our fisheries because they are mo a lot of wild caught mm -hmm. fisheries as well as some um, aquaculture. Mm. Um, so that's really, really important for the future. And the other thing that's really important by way of the, I guess the flavor attributes is that, you know, we're a big country like, like Vietnam, we're a big seafood um, producer um, we have a massive coastline with, with many different types of meroir, which is the, the, the marine environment opposed to the terroir, which is where you get the land environment. So the, there's so many different factors of um, the currents, the warmer currents, the cooler currents, of which you get the different types of um, seafood varieties more in the, in the cooler, cooler um, climate um, oceans. But that's quite unique to many other seafood producers, just the diversity and also the supply chain integrity and the traceability through the quality program. You know, talking about diversity and the selection of products that uh, we have available, how do you like to prepare these dishes? Uh, of course, like to add on like a little bit of my, my personal experience mm. through Rebecca. So <clears throat> I went uh, fishing with family in Australia and you know, you oh. go um, to Abalone Cash yeah. It's very near the shore yeah. where you just go and get a screwdriver and you <laughs> get it off the rock mm -hmm. and you slice it and dip it in the seawater. And yeah. that's the best way mm -hmm. to eat so abalone, fresh. so fresh, still moving. And you know, when you put it in your mouth, you know, it does perfect uh, saltiness of the water matched with the crunchy and the freshness mm -hmm. of the abalone make it for me a perfect dish. Uh, beside that, you know, for fish also, you have to measure in a certain size mm -hmm. to a different kind of species in mm -hmm. order to catch them. If you are a wild uh, fisherman, catch mm -hmm. it and you need to know certain rule mm -hmm. in order to catch. That's why um, Australian government have uh, done a great job on preserving mm -hmm. all the species to keep uh, a good source that you always to have for the next generation. Yeah. Uh, beside that, uh, I think for seafood, you have to cook it perfectly. Mm. And for my favorite way to eat seafood is grill, uh, poach or poach and eat cold. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, what you can bring different to it is you create different sauce. Some people you like some mayo and spicy mayo or some people you like the clarified butter. Some people like Tabasco mm. or with even some lime and some yeah. salt and pepper. Mm. 
for me that's the best way to cook however uh, in order to master that for a perfectly cooked you take some time and you yeah. need to cook a lot of seafood for that <laughs> <laughs> just, just even one minute over it kind of could spoil it even 30 right? seconds so, or or even the temperature is boiling or mm -hmm. something like that yeah or if you want to cook like a cold dish yeah. if you don't shock it in cold enough or yeah. fast enough it go wrong it's go rubbery even for fish or uh, selfish or anything uh, especially for seafood mm. but it's when you know once you've got that timing right it can be so simple exactly it can be so quick easy simple fast uh -huh. but yeah the, the more complex like this is the most beautiful complex dish i just love the way you've used the stock from the head of the lobster into the paella to make it poached and also with these incredible flavors and how, how do you see vietnamese consumers liking their seafood is it fresh usually or they, they like it prepared <clears throat> I think uh, for all Vietnamese, mm -hmm. if the seafood, like in, in our Western country, they understand and know about chill seafood, mm -hmm. which is a cut from the morning. Mm -hmm. And this is, is kind of dead, but they preserve it right way with a lot of ice and mm -hmm. right temperature is still good. Mm -hmm. However, Vietnamese people, they don't like chill or dead seafood. Like they have to see it swimming. Mm -hmm. That's why you see <laughs> a lot of place. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of tang, fish tang. Yeah. And, it's and great. if it's not live, people say it's not good seafood. So for Vietnamese culture, for Vietnamese people, I think uh, fresh and uh, moving live seafood mm. is the most important. Yeah. And it's important too, I mean, live is without a doubt, if that can be managed. But because of the technologies, the, the quick frozen snap freezing mm. um, that can be done, it's done and preserves the, the actual life. The key is mm. making sure you've got integrity mm. across every link in that cool chain mm. hence being so close to Vietnam even with our chilled and our frozen products you know that because of the quality assurance you know that it's 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 still very very fresh so that's some work to do to raise the awareness of consumers about frozen is okay yeah frozen is good too it's just understanding where it's come from mm -hmm. and how and how it's got to the plate and, and for the species that can be imported live to Australia what what are those into Vietnam, well, mm. definitely the the, the the number of species of the rock lobster, mm. the three species, and then a number of species of oysters, mm. as well as the abalone, um, the three different species of the, the wild abalone. And then we've also got different types of crab. Mm. And then we're looking to bring in some more more, more crustaceans and also other fish. That's yeah, you know, just yeah, before this, Vin was mentioning the number of suppliers, <clears throat> maybe about, let's say, five years ago, or when this place opened three years ago, not too many people offered I Australian seafood. Two, three. Food, two, two or three. three. Yeah. And now it's just yeah. exploding. I think yeah. uh, uh, Australian seafood is something new now and something uh, the market really yeah. like. I really like the Tasmanian big crab. Uh, yeah, the, or the, the, the snow crab. Exactly. I oh, think, you know, they say the big crab. they say king crab is the best, but for me, I like that more. Mm. Yeah. And Rebecca, why should more importers take a look at bringing Australian products? Well, the, the Australian suppliers mm. are looking at Vietnam. Mm. Uh, we have been exporting Australian seafood products globally for, for many, many, many years. Very experienced. The sector are uh, very experienced in export. And so looking to grow um, the demand here with our partners. And so we have fabulous relationships with a number of importers and distributors and those who are already servicing both the horeca, the hospitality mm. and hotel restaurant trade, as well as the retail mm. trade. So we're, we're happy to talk to any other importers looking to source from, from Australia. We're looking to invite industry to Australia to experience um, and working with the producers. Well, guys, that kind of wraps up today's episode oh. of Taste for Australia. It's our third and final episode. Uh, just to recap, if you haven't tuned in for the other two episodes already, check them out. The first with Chris Donnellan over at Stoker talking about Australian meats, specifically beef. Uh, we had our second episode with Chef Heli Tong. I like to call her chef, she's not really chef at home. <laughs> um, specializing in dairy and fruits. And of course today, Chef Vin talking about seafood, especially this beautiful plate of lobster that he prepared for us. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you so much, Vin. Uh, and for those tuning in, don't forget, we have the Taste of Australia promotion going on all month long and into June as well at your local retailers, at your local restaurant, including Opzone, check it out. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you, Chef Ben. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, my pleasure to thank have a great- Thank you very much, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you.